drink of water. Hello, good afternoon. It is 12.45 right on time Pacific time. My name is Jamie Fang. Who? Go away, Norman. <laughs> Jamie Fang, the youngest of the Fang. Like I said every week, we're at Norman's Orchids, orchids.com. Um, we've been, the, what week are we, 27? 27. Uh, we're on our 27th week of our podcast since we started. Um, I want to say hi to everybody. Hi to Jeff. He's on his way back from um, Colorado. I'm like, where did he go? Yeah, Colorado. Maylene says uh, Who? hi from Michigan Lakeshore. Who? May? May uh, Mailing, yeah. Oh, and May. <laughs> you know, I'm actually having a great time getting to know um, quite a few of you. Um, Tina from Connecticut. Who's Who's from Connecticut? Tina from Connecticut. Oh, hi, Tina. Um, I do like to say, I'm sorry, last week I was just so frustrated. Um, I do enjoy you guys, and I do want to get to know you guys better. I actually know quite a few, you know, the girls. We have a girl club now. Um, PM me if you guys want to chat. You know, um, I do have time. I think um, Jav Morgan... Jeff Morgan helped me <laughs> explain what the jumper was yesterday. That was quite fun. I love his twist of how to explain what jumpers are. Um, I asked to talk to him. We had a nice chat. So that's a good way to get to know somebody. Um, go ahead and PM me if you, you know. It's okay to PM me. Just don't PM me on support question because I can't get to it. I have no way to understand how to look through the shipping info. Anyway, so the previous podcast is on YouTube under Norman's Orchids, so please go subscribe and enjoy and share with your friends that's not in the U.S. because we're still limit this group to U.S. because we do want to make sure we have time for everybody in the U.S. So today we're going to talk about something that um, every housewife or every small home grower endure, um, not because it's really easy for Norman to sit up here and talk about how things are grown, how great things are grown under this beautiful greenhouse system with a small cooler. Why well, I know we have outdoor stuff, so go away, Norman. <laughs> I'm smiling. <laughs> and we have um, Roger here, uh, acting director and cameraman. Brian is in-house. He's helping customers. We hosted at the AOS um, judging this morning here, uh, first time since March. So we should be doing that every month till COVID's done. So we'll have AOS judging here every month. I think, is this second Saturday? Yeah, at second Saturday. So if anybody's local interested, you can pop by and see what's going on with judging. Today we're going to talk about how to repot, what to do when you have a sick plant or a plant that's not so healthy. Uh, at the greenhouse, Anthony throws it away because we just don't have time to um, to go through that baby and repotting and get it back to healthy. So she actually throws some that was actually still workable for a lot of us. So I have an orchid wall that we, uh, Roger and I have Bailey's grown under um, Bougainvillea leaf because we can't put up a structure. We're in a condominium in LA. So I brought back some plants that are really not desirable <laughs> that you would be surprised this came out of Norman's but these are actually what we grow in LA and I just want to see and for you guys to see not every plant that's perfectly grown like you see in the greenhouse these have been in my outside environment in downtown LA underneath the bougainvillea leaves you can tell the leaves are burned from outside sun exposure but these are what I was going to repot. Um, then I thought, hey, let's just bring this home. And I can show you guys. Not everything is pretty and, and glorious, right? Any question, Roger? Unless they want me to just show them all pretty things. And I, this is probably the first time I gather stuff ahead. I pre, pre moist some of these moths. These have been washed. And when you get the moths, make sure you wash it two or three times. Um, you know, you want to get the rid of the acid and all that junk that's been out. Um, I wash, we wash it three times, so I've, we have a bin in the back, so I went and picked it up and put it moist and, and again. The shears, I already torch. Um, we, you, I buy these from Home Depot, but you can buy them anywhere. I think they're smaller ones too. 
Or if you have a gas stove, like I said last time, just use a gas stove so you don't have to have another gadget in there. Okay. These are been torched and cooled off. Hey, I don't have any peanuts, but I guess it's okay. So. Oh, I'm wearing one of my old t-shirts I was showing to me. Um, May or, or a friend, which I will post, um, sells t-shirts, orchid-related stuff that I'm really excited. I'm buying some shirts. I'll probably start wearing them for the podcast. This is my oh, my company, Orchid Affair. Um, that I found it today. I go cool. So, any questions, Roger? No, Kathy just got some echoes, so I'm not quite sure what to do. But is, is on my iPad turned on? Yeah. Sorry, we had like five devices turned on today. Um, is there still? Ask if there's still echoes. Okay, so like I said, these are a really crappy plant that just hangs outside. Um, I went dumpster diving, I'm sure. So we got good old weeds and everything. Here's your name tag. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. This is what happened when you let it go. So this one is not as bad. When it's so dry, so no matter what you do, when you hose it water, it's just not going to get it wet. The only time this will work if you just soak it. And this is what happened in my office as well. If I let it go too far or too long, it gets so hard that you can water all you want. It's never going to get wet. Um, so at home, people wanted this sh me to show you how I water at home. But at home, I actually have three buckets and trays and everything. But today, um, I'm just going to show you real quick. But maybe another day I'll do a watering at the condo. Uh, for people that grow at home like I do, don't have the luxury to, to turn on the hose and just go. Um, let me hurry up. Finishes. So this one is a little bit bone dry, so I don't want to disturb too much of it. So I'm going to just, um, usually I soak it. So this bucket, this bucket I haven't, it's clean water, so I'm just going to soak it a little bit. Usually when it gets so dry, I'll just dump it in there and I'll soak it for five minutes or whatever, do what I need to do and come back to it. Um, then the following water and they'll take water because when you let it go so bone dry, uh, it really needs a good soak to get it back so for the following week you can water. I don't have a pocket. Anyway, that's okay. That's for you. So anyway, usually in the condo, I take a fresh wa a bucket of water. I'll water it through. Imagine there's a pot in there. I water it through. Then I have these trays, and they all sit there and get then um, dry. And the following week, if I'm doing the fertilizer, I'll do the first watering. It'll be fresh water. Let it wet. My second bucket will be fertilized water, and then I'll do the same thing. All the water capture in here, I don't recycle. This goes straight out to the garden for the roses, my hoyas, or whatever. And that is really the whole thing about how to water in the condo. I have took home a push cart. Um, so I have three buckets set up. Let me just recap. Uh, if I'm not doing fertilizing, I just do fresh water, scoop it out, pour it in, let it capture it in another bucket right here. Then I have a tray with the four inch or three inch holes and just let it sit and let it drip down to the tray. Then I put it back in my decorative pot um, on the bookshelves and stuff. So this is how I do it, okay? And if the following week, or the following watering week, I shouldn't say following week, the following, I've been watering every 10 days because it's been really dry in my greenhouse versus in the winter, I'll probably go every 14, 15, 15 days. Um, sorry, there's a lot of customer here. Um, so the following water and I would do fresh water, another bucket of fertilized water, and an empty bucket. So first you water real quick with the regular water. Then the six, second scoop will be the fertilized water. And everything go captured through by the third bucket. Third bucket, when it gets full, it goes right outside to the Hoya, to anything I'm flying on you know, watering, just not, you know, your food because the fertilizer is not edible. Megathrive is. Anyways, so now, what, you know, this plant is, it's pretty um, neat. It's been outdoors and it's pretty, uh, what is the right word? 
weather through all the heart so I'm just gonna I'm planning on cutting everything out even this good spike so I'm not I really don't care what I you know how well I do it well maybe I'll leave it we'll see um, I think I'll leave it it's a pretty good spike so can you see Rush? we can hear you guys <laughs> Brian's like, sorry. Saturday's been really busy at the nursery. We can hear you too, Hannah. And I didn't say hi to anybody today. So actually the root system is not too bad. It's actually all still pretty plump. They're not dead. I'm surprised. Usually when I go dumpster diving, they're either um, really plant that needs to be repotted. We don't have time. I know it sounds awful. We don't have time then we chuck it out. So here's our, the root system. Actually, every one of them are still plump. They're, they just discolor. So I just kind of go through it and it, whatever falls off, falls off, you know. I'm not yanking, I'm just kind of fluffy. Okay, I think they're pretty good. I'm gonna keep most of the root system I think anyway so usually when we repot um, we this is what we used to do when we were younger when my mother taught us we would take we would take the tag onto the leaf and then we would have trays of them on the table and we just let it dry and sometimes we do cut the leaf or we do yeah root pruning um, so we just let it air dry we come back to it a few days later right that's how we used to do it. My mom taught us. Um, we tape it. Mom. Top mom, shut up. Go play. <laughs> Whatever. Mom's listening. True. In, in heaven. Um, yeah. So we do tape it. So otherwise, you got like twenty plants on the table, and then the tags gets all jumbled up, and you're in trouble. So we would have a tray, and the tags already taped. You just let it air dry. You don't have to fuss with it. It's an orchid. They're supposed to enrich, enrich your life, not make it more work. Okay. So today, since the professional people are doing it, and these I usually <laughs> professional housewife. Karen professional. Has a, uh, Karen has a question. Abbott. Uh, Carol Wolf. Oh, Carol! Hi, Carol. Uh, Jumper. Uh, do you leave spikes on sequential bloomers if tip has broken off? Uh, if the tip's broken off, I I do leave it because sometimes they will do a branching. I know that one. Norman's trying to help me behind the scene. Uh, if it's broken off. You leave it because sometimes they'll have a, a side branch that come off of it. I mean, there's leave no point, on. you know, another spot side branch. So leave it on. That's a great question, by the way. And these, I usually leave it, the old moss, and I work it into my soil for better drainage. I don't know. That's the way I do it. It works. My, my plants are all pretty and healthy. So anyways. Anyways. So... I can put it back. Or I'm gonna move it up. I think I'll move it up. Overpot it a little bit. And another thing about repotting, um, it's be careful because I see a lot of you guys that like overpot by quite a few sizes. If you come out of a three inch or three and a quarter, you can stay the same size, it's fine, or move it up one in, one pot size up, but never go three pot size up. People seem to think that if you move it up, they'll grow faster, but it's quite the opposite. It'll help you kill it faster because now you have too much water in it, and that opposed too much water. But if you grow in bark, um, it's a little bit different story. So, do you need to move the camera? I'm trying to help Roger, he's doing two things. Um, this is what Norman, well, everybody does it different, but you know, wallop a little bit in the center, and make sure the leaf have some. And, it depends on the grower. Some growers do it too tight, I think. It chokes the plant. But I kind of like to do it loosely. Yeah, I'm a business major, but I've been doing this for 30 years. I do watch and learn. <laughs> so, yeah, you do it in the center. I do it lightly helping. And it's always the two finger thing on each side, lightly tuck it in, right, it's all 
it helps when you, we, we start it form it first. Then you grab some more. Are you dying to get on today? No, no, no. no. Oh. <laughs> Norman, Norman's over here. Going, usually we have to chase him down. We have some quite a few friends here today. Um, yes, I'm supervising you. Yes, dear. Whatever. I'll be nice. Yes, my Mr. Mentor. <laughs> Anyways, so again, um, we don't want it too tight because then it'll be very hard for the water to be, it's very hard for it to be watered. So always two fingers. So I think we're good. I kept this root system because I noticed there was a lot of, uh, the spike is there's a lot of good roots to support it. So here we go. Um, the right way to put a tag in is squeeze a little bit. It goes in really easy. Okay. And these don't look too great. Remember, these are from my outdoor garden. Then I think I showed you guys what it looks like. What do you think, Roger? It's good. Yeah. And we don't water afterwards. Right? Yeah, well, Roger brought a good point. Um, we're not going to water. It, I'm not going to put it straight outside. Um, to the garden in yeah. case in case it rains or whatever so I'm gonna probably put leave this and the outdoor patio still has um, an awning and stuff like that so it will not get water so I'll probably just leave it in the balcony for a couple weeks um, right now we're in fall so it's okay to go right out if it's in summer I always make sure I leave it in the balcony for at least a month because I don't want it to go into um, you know hot weather sun right away so here's our first repot we're good. Any questions? Yeah. That's pretty good, huh? You guys didn't think I know how to grow, did you? <laughs> That's why Norman always say, oh, I didn't realize you know how to grow. Okay, so we're just going to do a few. Now, don't freak out. This is, happens all the time in the sun, and I don't get really excited. This is how, and this outside, you see, I got beautiful weeds. Even the weeds are dying. Um, so you just clean it up. So Maiden says that she uh, spread the makeup right to the roots before she gets yes. up. Yeah, but um, we sprayed Mega Mega Thrive, Mega Thrive last week, right? Remember, last Sunday we already did Mega Thrive. I see. So we're not going to do it again. I forgot to tell you. Yeah, um, you could do that. You could do Mega Thrive because you got everything already exposed, so you might as well spray. But we already did that. Our Mega Thrive Sunday was last week, right, Roger? We yep. did everything, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, I, I'm not really all that conscious about it, but I, the root system came out pretty, so I'm not going to worry about it. But yeah, if it's some plants that come out with, you know, three roots, um, some people will complain uh, if it's a species. Not, some species just don't have a lot of roots, right? Uh, you know, some novelty they don't put on new root. Yeah. So and. When it when it's what? When it's cold. Yeah. When it's, you didn't say that right. when it's when it's cold, there obviously the root system is not growing as fast. Um, so if you get a roots, um, some roots are gonna die anyways. And that's why the new ones come out. Um, so just clean it off because people will freak out. I think people get so excited that half the time I think that'll help you grow, kill a plant because you're either a plant that's really expensive. You'll take care of it more. And that's usually how you kill it, you know. Oh, I pay a lot for this plant, so I really got to be careful. That's when I notice that people kill it because they just overwater it more. Anyway, so here's the second plant. Oh, shoot, I'm already over. I could do two. Um, okay. Norman's like, that's okay. Um, the, these pots, if you want, you can recycle, bleach it, dunk it, buy no, sand it. But these are cheap pots. Um, I'm just saying if you want to but usually not these are disposable um, actually the the moss is actually pretty good i'm not going to disturb it these are these are these are good moss still but what i wanted to do because it's already coming out um perfect so i'm gonna just i think sometimes sunny has these questions the roots um, or showing up, what do we do? They have sequential flowers still going, everything is healthy, what do I do? Um, I still repot it, you know, you get to a point that 
you want to save the plant. You don't want too much root system exposed as well. Uh, I think in Sunny's case, Sunny, you're growing bark, so I guess you could keep filling up with bark. Or I hardly disturb this plant, right? So uh, my, my mission is to get some of the root system cover without disturbing the root. And I just kind of looked at it. The root, um, the moss was still good. So I don't really want to repot it versus this other one. The moss is already pretty crappy. Um, so I just want it to cover the top and give it new. See how healthy it is. So you can still do it. You still repot. But gently, you're really not destroying it. Here comes Gia, so watch Hannah. Um, you're not destroying the root system at all. Um, you just kind of want to add to it and maybe up pot half the size or same size or one size bigger, whatever. Whatever suits for that plant. So here we go. We did not disturb the plant much. And I'm doing the two finger thing gently gently push it in okay we're not like forcing it in because you don't want to have too much holes in here that you water is it's going to be um not even i'm having a problem like describing today roger but as long as everybody can understand see we actually did what i wanted to do cover more of the roots that was just out um we did not destroy the plant. We did not repot it. We did not do anything to it. We just add more and our sequential spikes are still there, right? And these, I got clean blades. Um, I think I remember here, let's see what the blade height, yeah. Um, how to cut the leaves to make it look like you haven't touched it. Voila, right? You had to cut according to the shape of it. And I love razor braids too. A little costly, but it, it serves its purpose. So, I mean, this is actually yes. pretty. Cool. I need to say, are you going to trim the dead parts of the leaf? <laughs> Sunny's my buddy. Of course I am. I could I could feel your, your next question coming. See? Now it doesn't look like we just picked it up from outdoor and then I got all these burn marks because so if we clean it up. I'm a visual person, you know, as a designer we like everything pretty. And of course this one is a no ID. This is what happened when you go dumpster diving. <laughs> so, um, but for my out, uh, Gia, this is all my stuff from outdoors that I, I usually repot at home, but I brought it in to show everybody. They look beautiful. But this is outdoor. Look at this. It's all burnt. Gia just showed up. Anyways, but I do wanted to show you guys not everything is always glorious pretty and I'm sure you guys all have those at home But I wanted to show you how to take care of it. It's all my fault when it's burnt <laughs> Well, this is my outdoor. I mean I live in a condo in LA. What are you gonna get? So like, like I said earlier, these are just so well, this is not as bad I have one at home that's so dry that it took like three hours to get it wet um Good looking roots though. I know. I'm showing you guys how I water at home. Since you were late, you can you can watch this again. I will home. be watching it again. Okay. I need to. And frankly, when they're outdoor plant, I'm not doing braiding. I don't care. <laughs> I just spread the disease around if they are if there is any. But indoors, no. All my treasure plants, I don't. You swap out the water all the time. Yeah. The the idea is fresh water pour it into the second bucket, catches it, and then it goes on my tray to drip. And the water that's capturing it, the drain out water goes out to the roses. That's commitment. Well, that's <laughs> living in LA in a condo, you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> again, this is actually pretty good moss. So I may not destroy it, but again, I want to. Is Sunny still on? Yep. Sunny, you know, Keep, Sunny has this cute. I don't. I didn't mean to keep using Sunny as an example, but I adore Sunny. Um, it the plant already raised up quite a bit, right? Good. Climbing so, out of there. Yeah, climbing out of there. But the root system is beautiful. The moss. I'm taking a peek. Are still very fresh. Again, um, this one has a spike, so we're gonna leave the spike. But I do want to take care of that problem that. 
Um, Sunny had a question before when the plants raise so high, you're exposing a lot of root system. What do you do? But then you got sequential flower spikes still going. Do you want to, what do you want to do? Of course, obviously, if Norman will go away and not listening to me on his own phone, that'd be lovely. Actually, I have a question. I think it would be. Shh, shh. Um, I think for some mediums, mm -hmm. some people they chop off half of the root. Oh yeah, yeah. Should we should we chop off half of the root on this one? Um, if it's too big. No, because um, you're not gonna chop off the whole root. Actually, you'll chop off the plant. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I think Norman did that once. It rained so long that. Well, um, right now, winter yeah, winter time we don't. You actually butcher it. I think Norman did it once. Summertime. Yeah, it's like especially doritas. They like to climb. Um, they'll have a whole stem and the root system. So I would something to chop it off. Then that plant for sure, we will leave it till it dry. Um, before we used to use this thing, the spray for the tar. Remember the black spray years ago. Um, we would seal it basically if we want to pot it right away, but we don't. We got enough thing to do at the greenhouse that we don't have to rush and do it all once. Let it dry. So we let it air dry, and yeah. then, like I said earlier, if there's. Sometimes you spray something more possibly infection. <laughs> Norman, you can step into the camera and you can talk to you. <laughs> Whose shot is this? This is the pre show. It's called the pre-show, Jamie's pre-show. Jamie's pre -show. Acting like a grower today, getting my nails dirty. Anyways, yeah, Roger's question is, I would not chop it, it's all beautiful root system. You saw me earlier, um, I wish we had a plant, <laughs> even our, our dope plants are pretty healthy, Roger, given they're burnt. If you have a plant that has so much dead leaf, of course, you're gonna do a, a root trimming. Um, but unfortunately, everything came out really pretty. I was trying to rip it apart. I picked the one that's burned ugly, but um, root system is beautiful. The only thing I didn't like and Sunny didn't like it was raising so much. So, we're just, especially outdoors, it's gonna, this will help to keep it moist. Um, the only problem we might have in the winter time is all that rain, right, Roger? We had all the rain, but I think we, when, when that happened, we just don't cut our bougainvillea as much. We let it really overflow to the point we could barely see or faily for the winter. So we could make sure that they don't get crown rot. Um, but I think last year of all that rain, we lost maybe three plants out of 50 on the fan. So it's not that bad. That's part of, part of what you have to go through if you're gonna wanna grow outside. The root cyst, I already have some moss in there to cover those roots bottom roots. That's a lot of moss. Huh? That's a lot of moss there. <laughs> oh yeah, Roger. I think next week we'll put you on here. Mr. Dr. Lee has never potted anything, have you? Okay. No, I just uh, let you pot. Yeah, he, he just let me do it and he kind of criticized it as I do it. No, I, I just do uh, the Mega Thrive. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's my Mr. Mega Thrive. <laughs> Two weeks ago I took that big cat home. It took me five hours. To do what? To repot it. To re five hours to repot? I'm glad you don't have a business in orchids. <laughs> Are you talking about This it? is what the problem is. See? Roger, you say there's a lot of moss and they got hollow spots. Uh -huh. See? And I got to fill it up. You know, you stick to you being a doctor, okay? <laughs> and I'll stick to me being everything I do. And you can tell. I'm gonna cake it, and this is how I bake at home. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you guys gotta like my sense of humor. Yes. Norman, you are gonna be in so much trouble today when I'm off. He's over here making fun of me, guys. Gotta get some caffeine. And this is what we do sometimes. You know, instead of a pen, see, kind of just help the moss go in there. We're not packing it solid, but it sure helps because I was having a hard time getting all the moss in, right? Because I don't want that hollow. So we're just gonna, can you see Roger? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, people are having, whoops. <laughs> Sorry, I don't need this anyways. Um, yeah, use a pen or sticks or whatever you wanna use to help you get the moss into 
you don't want to have too much holes. Um, air pocket is what I should call it. Mm. Air pocket in there. So should we cut the spikes off later? Um, so they won't be moist? Oh, honey, I'm going to get to that. <laughs> I could only do one thing at a time. I'm talking, I'm doing podcasts, and I'm spiking. I'm doing everything. So relax, people. And then it's fine. Okay, So, yeah, sorry, it's a little chaotic. We still have a few judges here. And people are having way too much fun. They're laughing over there. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I guess I brought just enough moss today. I eyeballed it. Just enough to do my three plant. The sun says use chopsticks to uh, depack the, uh, the moss. That works too. Yeah, we're Asians. Chopsticks are for eating for us. Okay. Love you, Sunny. <laughs> Now, yeah, but I just grabbed whatever was handy. Um, so here we go. It's a little crooked, so we're gonna, whatever, I'm just gonna straighten it out, but remember, you always hold your center of your plant because you don't wanna just snap off the plant. And usually I would clean before I repot, but there was just so much destruction today. You know, Mr. Fang watching over me, making me nervous. Well, but anyway, so. Like I said earlier, these were already pre-sterilized. I should have done this before. But. And you don't mind repotting with the spike off? I didn't take it off, um, Gia. I did not repot it. Yeah, I just did. add on to it. I did, oh, not, that's true. I did not disturb the root system. Um, when you have to, you have to. You know, you can't let a you know, plant being exposed too much. Mm -hmm. So here we go. And I'm gonna pick up a different blade. And he says, yes, we use chopsticks to eat. <laughs> Thank you, Macy. You understand. We would never use chopstick to eat. To stick there. Here's another fresh blade. We're gonna cut this off to make it pretty. Make sure the blade is on the right side. Plastic surgery. <laughs> this is what I call an orchid affair. Jamie comes in and, and do the final clean. And if you're ever going to dispose this, I usually tape the edge. Please don't be careless because you never know if you're going to go grab something out of trash and this will be a really bad cut. Um, I usually either that or you fold it in paper. Um, um, so make sure the next person, whoever get in touch with this trash, will not cut themselves as well. Um, we have somebody said um, they wish... Jamie will show how to spike. I think we've done that a gazillion time, but we will do it today again. I love this container. It fits really well. Um, so you guys should all, everybody should buy the wire that... I'm trying to get off, Roger. Roger's like, your time's up. It's okay. I'm trying my best. This is my last one. Um, people are allowed to leave the podcast. You don't have to stay and watch the whole thing. If you don't want to see me, just probably come on at one fifteen. Jamie will be off the pre-show. Norman will be on. Um, here, I'm going to final it. So, so go ahead and spike this, okay? Everybody should have a bundle wire at home that I think Donna Richard made me bundle this for you guys. <laughs> Always make sure you have one of these. I think there's seven fifty a bundle, not much. Um, just always make sure you have this at home. It will help you, trust me. Gently wiggle, make sure you're not stabbing any root system. Okay. I'm gonna toilet it back to me so I don't snack this off right in front of everybody. And as you go, hold on to the spike because you know, as you get closer to the flower, it's really kind of fragile and brittle, right? And then we're done. I don't have the right clipper, but leave a little bit on the bottom. 
Make sure you kind of tighten it in, but don't squeeze too much. Otherwise, you might poke yourself in the eye, and voila. <laughs> um, actually, this plant is probably good enough to stay indoors now that we clean everything off. Didn't quite clean this part off, right? Anyways, so I think this this actually could come inside, Roger. This is right. too good. Oh, wow. See, dumpsters, dumpster diving at Norman's Orchid is pretty good. <laughs> Actually, I can't believe it. We just don't have time to do what I just did right now for all these plants, because obviously we have so many other plants to grow. Um, but yeah, after a little cleaning, a little loving and care, repotting this thing, um, we're good to go. Remember, wet your moss. So now I don't have to water this for another couple of weeks until the next cycle that needs to be watered. So uh, I hope this helped. I think this is um, more of what I usually do for pre-show. But if you have any requests, I could help you do the, you know, easy task. Wouldn't want to bother Mr. Fang with this. But anyways, all right, guys, enjoy your day. Um, jumpers is tomorrow at 10 Pacific time. Again, thanks, jo Joff, JP, JP for writing such a cute write-up about my jumpers. I really enjoy that. It's like a cute little story. Um, it will be a lot of plants. I, I really had a great time this week, so the jumper is going to be a lot. And you guys don't have to watch it all the time. Uh, if I does, I'll put it on an announcement, and then you guys could go look at it under announcement and mark it sell or not. But eventually, every week the jumpers are sold, believe it or not. So here we go. And I just found this one. That's cute. Oh, it's just so pretty. I love it. So are we, right? Norman's is ready, dying to get up here today, so I'm going to let Norman um, hang out with you guys. Norman, these are clean, fresh, didn't use them. They're dirty, so I'll put them on here. You guys have a great day, and I will see you next week. The following week on the 25th, I think we're not here, right, Roger? Uh, so you guys will have a break from me and Roger for pre-show oh. on the 25th, but I might um, go live. I'm, I might go live wherever we are. Yes. I think we're going to be in top. Well, I think we're we're still here next Saturday. We're here next weekend. The weekend after is um, we leave. We, we'll probably be on our way back from Tahoe. We haven't figured it out yet. We don't know where we're going. It's um, Roger and my 10 year anniversary. Aww. Ho hopefully we come back still together. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, see ya. Norman, are you ready? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, borrowing a jumper. Huh? No, don't borrow my jumper. No, no, just show it here. Show it. Just a no, those are sold. I know, I know. Those are sold jumpers. There's your mother. I know, she gets mad. Yeah. Yeah. She was happy today because I ate long-time slippers on the right here. My house? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, Jamie. Hey. Yes. Say that after yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You would think he's a CFO. <laughs> hey, I need my mask. Where's my mask? Bye, guys. Hey, Roger, got new plants today. Okay. Whoa. Good morning. Good well, afternoon. Hi, my name is Norman Fong, and for the new member, I'm this is I'm the creator for the Norman Orchid that I started in 1986. So before I begin, I want to show you, some of you have seen the segment on the Ferranops Gigantia. And I show you one of the Gigantia Alba, and it's full open now, today. What oh, did you see? In the yeah, beautiful? it's gorgeous. So, wow. it just is, this is booming size in just four inch pot. And the flower kind is very good uh, for first bloom. So you can flower dragon here. It doesn't take a lot of space for the size. Okay. So that's good thing to know because there's a lot of the dragon here. All the hybrid coming out from our nursery. So this is very exciting, and the leaf is gorgeous too. Okay. Wow, we've been waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty. Okay. So today's topic is the dendrovian. Uh, dendrovian dash is one of my favorite topic. Uh, when I was in Hawaii back, I got a scholarship in 1984 to do anterior. And so I lived in actually, uh, uh, you know, a hero Hawaii for one semester, six months. 
and that's when I developed the the lichen of dendrobium uh, in Hawaii. Uh, there's a, a professor called uh, Asher developed a cut flower, the Jack and Thomas. That's been it's actually very similar to uh, this type. He used this, the Australian dendrobium, the native species, uh, for cut flower, and they that's why you have the the white dendrobium in the summer for for cut flower, not a denfell, but Jacqueline Thomas type. Okay, so dendrobium and in Hawaii, you know what? Some of them can get so tall, the Jacqueline Thomas, they use it for hedges. They can be up to six feet tall, and I, I'm not kidding. I have a, a, one of my uh, the, the, the dormitory I stay there. The neighbor have a uh, Jacqueline Thomas, and the he did grow to six feet tall, and he used as a hedge. And so, and when they flower in the, in the summertime, which is the peak season, it was an incredible sight. And then, then they can use it for to make a uh, orchid lay for 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 uh, wedding or, or and so on. So, how many of you have got dendrobium? Yeah. Good, good. Dendrobium is actually very exciting uh, genus. Uh, there's over fifteen hundred species. Uh, they, the only dendrobium all come from a most of from Asia. Uh, and then all the way down to uh, Australia, there's no dendrobium. Uh, most of the dendrobium uh, that we're familiar with uh, are the tropical one. Now, this this box just brought in by Andrew, and I'm gonna Andrew, I'm gonna help him talk some of this. So I'm gonna use it the Andrew's uh, dendrobium as an example. Okay. So this is the dendrobium, you know, the one that we're most familiar with. It's called what we call uh, the evergreen type. This, this type would never drop off the leaf. Okay, so this is a, a Hawaiian twinkle. It's actually very similar to this. Uh, it's a Jacqueline Thomas by Brew Twinkle. Uh, and this one here is Wu uh, Si. No, okay, <laughs> sorry. The, this one is called Bruce C. Uh, okay, the, so this is what we consider as the what we call the evergreen type. Okay, the evergreen type means it never. Uh, it's not like some of the nobel type, which is drop the leaf before the flower, and um, but they do drop the leaf only on the older can like this one here. So when they drop the leaf, have all can like this. That's it's, oh that's okay because they store a lot of water and the nutrient here. So and nice about dendrobium is uh, it a lot of this older can can rebloom. Okay, and this one here that the, the Andrew have is getting ready to flower again. But Andrew live in Los uh, Los Angeles. He he got his Andrew got his outdoor right perfect. And the, what I'm going to tell. I, I happened to uh, visit Andrew, and I told him to uh, give him more light. And especially right now is fall, and it's for for us in fall in California. If you uh, Pacific Northeast, my part of winter already, or what you're going to call. This is the time for all your dendrobium or even Canaria. If you go in a window sill. Put it closer to the window because a lot of time we tell you to put it away from the window because of the, the light intensity will be bright. We don't want you to burn the leaf. But now the day is getting shorter and day nighttime is getting longer. You notice that intensity of light is actually not as intense. It will burn your leaf or uh, your skin. So you can actually can put it closer to your window. This is the time you want to maximize the light. And for Andrew, I would put it at where you can get full morning sun, full morning sun. As long as the, uh, even in the middle of the day, when we're hot, uh, it doesn't burn. And even if it's slightly warm, it's okay because uh, depending on your area, Andrew live in the Los Angeles area, it's a lot cooler and more moisture than what we have here in, in the valley, okay? So the, the, at this time of the year, for the dendf uh, dendrobium, uh, evergreen type, the suitable, the shoot is mature and by the end of summer. So this is the time you don't want to, you want to start uh, 
cut back on your water because especially for the outdoor world it doesn't need as much water starting now starting now because it, just to us the weather is getting cooler and we don't need uh, we don't drink as much as in the summertime right Pe common sense and it also noticed a lot of this bump it started to show up this is the time to get maximum of light that's why you get the maximum spike okay so if the worst part you can do to this plant this time of year uh, I never the the person like the uh, slow release fertilizer uh, a lot of time people might, might get more, more even slow release fertilizer in there right now the true I, I will get to do a segment of um, a lot of this so-called slow release fertilizer is really misleading okay they say it will last three months it will last six months garbage okay this is very is is you know is is in the feed out uh, yes it, it it will work but if you do it right now a lot of soil release for us had a lot of nitrogen guess what you're not going to get flour you're going to get a lot of kiki it might give you uh oh just so much nitrogen it does it, instead of three flour give you one, one spike so andrew did a good job uh so look at the, look at all this bump here it, uh this is a this gonna give you a lot of flower coming up for this this coming spring if not okay so keep up the good job look at it this is what we like to see the new goal is at least equal or bigger than the previous goal okay so yeah so this is what we call evergreen type huh? you you're coming in about mega thrive <laughs> yeah and under you lights. use makeup right too, right? Good, good. If yes. You throw it under lights. How many hours of light now? Yeah, and that's a good question too. A lot of people say uh, when they go under light, if you go under light, evergreen type, or when we any of this what we call I like this as we get into more and more of this what we call miniature type uh, for under light. This type does not require a cold temperature before they flower. Dinobial type. So, because a lot of time we go under light, it's indoor. Unless you have a special area that have a separate room. I know I do know I have customers do that. They they have another room that let the temperature drop below down to fifty, so they can go light casting. They can go uh, in a symbolium, miniature symbolium. But most of it, if you don't have one light stand in the house, room temperature. The evergreen type is your best one to have to flower. The only thing you need to watch out is because really careful. And on my website, I have a session called Com Compact Grower. This is what I call Compact Grower. So it's still sufficient enough that it's not going to be so tall for uh, underlying. Okay, and it, it it will be okay for the room temperature. So this is the what we the evergreen type. And twelve hours of light, or start reducing the light hours. I would I was uh I would reduce the total twelve hours. Okay, and wow. this is another example of, of the evergreen type. And this is what we call the Jacqueline Thomas type. Whoa. Yeah, this is actually one of the uh yes Norman Jackson by back to the species one of those twisted ear uh, that's the other term. uh this two are the same you notice that this is from last year and then like like give it a good you know like you can have a second slide here and i got a, got a new ball coming up here So what, uh, what I did to do is once this flower is finished, you can actually just break. I would just break it for uh, for cut flower because the reason I say that because I I want to get promote. I want to make sure that all the energy go to this new grow coming up because this new grow is the one going to give you the flower this coming spring. Okay, so as soon as this fall open, will be by Thanksgiving. You can you just just break it off for cut flower. Okay. So, this is the Jack and, uh, Jack and Thomas type, not again. I said Jack and Thomas type, if you live in Florida and you want something really tall, 
and even trying to do as a hedge. Uh, this 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 variety is, is very good, and it's just massive, massive a purple flower, and I just love the leaf. Okay, and then look at the this evergreen type. They just love the heat. If you live in Florida, they will that weed for you. It's just not they're not hardy. They, they, uh, I I can put this. I I should put put this outdoor in my patio here, conservatory. Uh, 100 degree, they love it, okay? But when it's down to about 50 degree, is when I'm gonna, I will kind of put it in a greenhouse. Because at down below 55, you're gonna drop the leaf. Okay, that, and then they, that's just why the evergreen type they draw them, like this type, they they can take the, they love the heat, but they don't like the, the fall below 50, okay? So what Andrew can do is, uh, Andrew's area is, I've been to his house, the shelter because if you go this outdoor, you can just move it. If you outdoor, just move it against your the house under the gutter, so you protect from the rain and cold in the winter time. And the house, the wall at night is actually give up heat, so you can you get a, a micro climate. Okay, so Andrew, that's what you do. Andrew, you know, find a, a good area. So in the winter time, don't worry about sunburn. They can take the heat. I actually move it indoors. Yeah. Well, now you can put it outdoors. Okay. Yeah. The leaf, yeah. That's why the leaf is a little bit darker. Yeah. But put it a sun on top, and then when you for the outdoor in your area in Los Angeles area, uh, keep it on the drier side now. You don't okay. have to water the water so often. Okay. So this is the evergreen type, and then we have this hibiki. Okay. This is another one. Uh, one of our specialty. I love this. Hibiki is the Dendrovium botchitosum by Lensifolium. Okay, this is another one where it will, it will, it will, it will every time it will hot and cold because the two species, one of the species will take care of the cold, the other species will take care of the heat. So this is, Hibiki is a perfect, perfect Dendrovium for beginner. If you never have a, a, a good, uh, you want to try something different than the, the Japan, uh, the evergreen type, the common one, Go hippie it, it really, I, I, I can go this outdoor in the 100 degree weather. Yeah, and outdoors. yeah, and then go down to 45 degree here. And I think I have a segment on dendrobium before, but and again, they, Andrew, they, they, they can be bloom for the old can. So this is the one that's gonna be a bit, uh, it's got another new book coming out, so be ready for a lot of that, be fresh for next year. So when you go out this outdoor, uh, Andrew did a good job. This, uh, original, my original moss is uh, is moss, so he put it in the clay pot, and this is a good choice. The clay pot will dry out the mix, but not easy for him to handle. And then he also brought another one. It's what we call the Formosa type. Okay, the the Formosa type versus the evergreen type is very easy. Roger, can you look at look at the hair? It is the hair. Okay, and the, the different is the evergreen type, the Denfell type, they all flower from the tip at the end of the new growth. So they're from at the tip here, or the side. The Formosa type usually fall from the side. Okay, and this is a perfect example of the down, a frosty down, an earlier, uh, the earlier uh, hybrid, and that's it. They don't get any taller. And I have a, over here, over here. And this is the uh, newer, uh, this is the newer hybrid called Jaho Delight. It's actually uh, we, the one we get in a lot of work. This was actually flower outdoor in 100 degree, 100, 108. And so I was testing it. And if you go there in a mass, go all dendrovium like to be in the small pot size okay smaller the better because then all the energy go to the group not trying to fill out the pot okay and this is perfect example so this is outdoor right <laughs> okay so andrew yeah the, this is going to tom murray is frosted down is a, also a spring boomer so right now I'm gonna use this uh, since he bought this thing. Okay, this, do you mind? No. Okay, see all this, all the leaves, right? Right here? 
This is how you can oh. pinch them back. <laughs> ow! 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 <laughs> Hurt me. Okay, so how happened is, I'm, I do this because this actually, and then sunburn, that's okay. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm creating more air space oh, okay. and also light because they can flow more than once a year. The, the first flowering will be coming from this oil. What I'm doing is, this is the one, they always flower from the uh, previous year. So this is the one gonna flower. That way, it, the maximum light, you're gonna have a fresh, along with the new one coming here, maturity this year, along with the old one. So should I, is it full light also like the other one? Full sun. Full sun. You can how get cold it. in the winters? I always don't know how cold I should let it go. They can go. They, they they can go down to forty. Oh, Easy. so I'm fine. I'll go to Yeah, the 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 suitable the bad ball might drop, but that's great. The the company that is Symbidium. Oh, okay. And okay. one of my good uh, good friend, uh, Roy from H and R, and he, H and R did lots of the earlier breeding. Um, the uh, for example, the the region they call Formosa type. Yeah. The, there's a dendrobium Formosa actually from Taiwan. And yes. you know where they come from? They're from the mountain. Oh, okay. 1500 yeah. elevation. And they they can, they, they reported they can have, sometimes they have a uh, very rare snow. They, they might they might burn the leaf, but the candy is still retained. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. So this is perfect, very nice. You see here? So in the fall, this is when you start doing some measure. They go into the, you just cut off the dead Up. can. Make sure I want to see a lot of air okay. coming here and do a good inspection. Very healthy, good. So you can expect lots of this. Uh, get up with the, that can use more light. You see here, this will be give you a lot of nice spring. Yeah. Okay. Very I good also job. actually have a Formosa. Dendroma Formosa. Same yes. treatment? Same treatment. That, that, that Dendroma Formosa is even harder than this. Yeah, I bought it from you. Yeah, because the Dendroma, the Dalmarie type, uh, the reason they keep it small because they cross with a, a, the northern Thai species called Christian. And Christian is the miniature form. Oh. And they had a bright orange lip, okay? And then, this is another wonderful species that Andrew brought in. A pop of you also. Yeah, <laughs> they enjoy in Pimianum, okay? Andrew, what, what, did you, what did you do differently? Okay, so uh, morning sun, all yeah. the way to about 11.30. Yeah. And a uh, legal type. Right, and I also told you to give it what? More light? Yeah, yeah. A lot, more, a lot of water every other day. Yeah, this is the type of dendrobium, uh, uh, the, your premium or superbrum, uh, the fragrant one. Remember I told you before on the dendrobium? Uh, in the springtime, summertime, when they shoot and grow it, a lot of water, a lot of feeding. So this is what Andrew got. Look at the can. Okay. Uh, it's, it's longer than when I first bought it. Yeah. Yes, yes. So this is good. So this this is the the Lao strain yeah, from yeah. Lao. Okay, the Lao strain have very big flower. So a yellow straw, a yellow straw center and very beautiful fragrance. So Andrew, right now I was just getting maximum light. There's two ways of growing this. One philosophy. Uh, sometimes I, I personally like to give it so much light and a lot of feeding. Make sure you feed it, okay? And make it dry. And I let it dry for one month. I let it drop a leaf. Just one month? Yeah, a minimum in December. Yeah, because I have a premium, premium. Yeah. And I just dry it here, like from November, uh, from yeah. Thanksgiving to like uh, uh, right. uh, Valentine's Day. Remember there's a picture, I sh I, there's a teaser I show you, the, the uh, premium for love. That was actually taken uh, when I visited the uh, Togo Dome Show. And I talked to the exhibitor, and I like the way he grew it. He said, uh, he just handed out under, on the top of his greenhouse in Japan. And, you know, full, full sun because they have grass. And Japan is cold. As much as light, and then he let it dry. He let, the reason we let it dry is all the leaves drop. When the leaf drop, if you don't let the leaf drop, all the flower come up here. And then the, this can might shallow the other can. So by dropping the leaf, the, the foliage sent back all the energy back to the can. Okay, then you're gonna have maximum light number of flower coming in. That's how the guy in Japan, and he have a nice 
ran to it. You kind so of I also it. noticed that the terminal leads is already done. Yes, they, the, this is the why they already done growing already. So you know they have done the, the vegetative stage all by the end of fall. So the, the next stage, remember last month, last week, I told you to do supplement the Epsom salt. Oh, I don't have that. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't. Last time, this is the time in the fall, I told everybody you can do one tablespoon per gallon of water and water, you can water it down. Only do it once a year or twice a year, okay? And this Epsom salt, because the magnesium sulfate, we cannot add it to the, the, the fertilizer, they will so, But only once a year, in the fall or in the springtime, we do it a tablespoon per gallon of water and you can just drench them as a fertilizer. Don't mix up with any other fertilizer, just, just by once. itself. Just once? Just one. That, and that's penny. And that will, you will get conditioned the suitable. Oh, and okay. and when know, should I do it now? Huh? Should I do it now? Yes, you can do it now. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would start and do it now. Yeah. When should I start to dry that one? Because I, I want to like dry it soon because it should I would wait until November because in California we the reason being in uh, in California we still hot. Yeah. Yeah, we still have eighty degree. Okay, yeah. online. But if you are in uh, yeah. Pacific Northwest or Northeast, you you the door, your daylight is really shorter. You can do it now. Or if you are in Florida, uh, you can actually the the trick to get them more flowers is to you know, make sure you don't get as much water as you drink in Canada because in, in South Florida it's, it's still warm. But by, by putting it on the, the drier side, it's actually going to tell the plant that, hey, you know, their hormonal will be changing. So it'll be more cytokine for flower versus more oxygen for leaves. So it will be ever for constantly. All right? And so this, so for in this, in Andrew's case in California, in West Coast, uh, the end of October. Halloween. But yeah, after Halloween, it starts right, and then put it away, don't get water, and you still can feed it, uh, okay? And I think that's all you have here. Epsom salts for all the orchids or just dendrobium? Uh, all the orchids, yeah. Oh, uh, this okay. is the time, yeah, uh, for all your collection. What exactly does the salt do? Okay? Well, the common is Epsom salt. This is the same one that you, we use it for soaking the feet. Okay. But the Epsom salt is the, is is the magnesium sulfate? Mm. It is the magnesium that we want. Oh, okay. At this time of year, and especially, what does that do? huh? What, what does that do? Well, magnesium sulfate will good for coal fuel, increased coal fuel, and also magnesium is a is a uh, micronutrient. Oh. That's why you only want to use. You don't want to use too much. You know, you have you, know, like you, you don't want. It, it's essential, but it's. This time of the year, between changing the season, is very important. Uh, it's, it's beneficial. It's a for sort of the all. Uh, if you talk to some of the old timers, they swear by it. And in one of you know what, it would work. And it's very economical. I'm sure you have one at home. Magnesium sulfate, Epsom salt. It's wonderful for salt your feet in the winter time. <laughs> okay, but uh, okay, Andrew. Can I have one more question? Back to, back to you? I also have a dendrobium sinelli. Sinelli, yeah. So I think that's the same as the hairy type? Or? Yeah, the sinelli also have hair. Yeah. So yeah, I would classify and put it take together with the formosa type. Okay. Yeah. So but, same cold weather? Yes. Yeah, and then the, it's okay to let them drop the leaf. If you're not sure about the, the cold tolerance, uh, on my website, uh, on every dendrobium, they have a temperature. If it's an intermediate, that means they can take the, they can take the cold. If I if any of the dendrobium in my culture and my temperature requirement is that warm, you know, those are usually what are the for the tropical area, like the dendrobium phalaenopsis. Those are the evergreen type. But for example, the dendrobium for most of the time, the dominant type, is always that warm and intermediate that means they can be outside so you can do your homework and if you have any question you can always before you order you can always email support and they uh if they, if they cannot answer the question you know they, they will forward the email to me and, and then oh best yet post the question on the group 
because there's this group of love of experience growing yeah, yeah. and then everybody by posting the question where the PM me they are only one to one that way everybody can benefit and you know I'm sure there's some there'll be some because there are people might be in your same area they might be have different kids than I, than I can okay no man there's one question yes um, the Epsom salt mm -hmm. do you just soak the media or yeah. do you drench the leaves too? I, drink, I, I use it the same way that you water and feed your orchid. So you wet the foliage and down into the poly media and then they drain out. That way the, the leaf and the root, especially the root, can they all pick it up. You spray it to wet the leaves? You can also spray. Yeah, especially, that's a good question. If you, if you have some of those leafless orchid, yeah. you just spray the leaf. Yeah. Now, some of these for most. Of the, I, so this is some, this is a perfect example of the, the small stopper. This is a, uh, this is the type from Asia. I love the, the, this is semi tropical. Now this is a perfect example. If, if you have situation like this, I will not repot it because because it's just mature, and now they go into the mature, the any destruction. There's no shoot, no repotting because this will flower coming up in the springtime. And this is the one that does that easily. It's called showstopper. Which one is that? Okay, this is And then this is a new one. This is Formosa type. This is the enjoyment Formosa. But what? it's the Pororic form. Oh, Pororic. And here is a perfect example of the enjoyment Formosa. Yeah. The Dendrobium Formosa actually uh, uh, itself is not a really tall grower, uh, but they have flower looks like Catalina, the massive flower. The hair, the suitable. Yes. Um, the Dentansia type, like Abogatum. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, what do you advise to do with those? Abogatum? Like yeah. Pomeri? Abogatum, Parisii, those are the type very similar. Those are one that are a little bit cool. They don't need as much. I'm going to get into no bio type. They actually, or oh, they don't have to be really cold, cold, but they do need have a dry rest, and yeah. they will benefit from the, the Epsom salt too. Oh. So when you do the Epsom salt, when I say do something, you do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Epsom salt, magnesium sulfate is a fertilizer, so it's not pesticide, so you don't have to worry about not able to do this species or this one and even perfect patty would like it too really yes oh okay yeah especially the multi floor yeah yeah especially the multi floor with the with the solid leaf Santa Filipinensis, Michael Cooper with they love mess they, they love magnesium sulfate and what thing you will notice after you put absent salt or magnesium sulfate feeding the next day it's almost a make it right it's a the, the, the leaves is kind of grassy. Oh. They hobby. Okay, magnesium sulfate is also very important uh, for building the uh, chlorophyll, which is the building block for photosynthesis. But, but only once a year? I will only do it once a year because it is a micronutrient. So you don't have to do it every month. Yeah, there's something you have, but the last time this, this is enough throughout the year. But on, we only do it in the just right before the flower this time of year because it's changing the season and in turn it's actually it, it's added benefit in addition to your mega thrive so before we have mega thrive magnesium sulfate is a very uh, uh salt is essential but now if you have mega thrive and this in there it's going to be amazing this is why see this right here wow Yeah. Here. Same crop. Oh. The difference is, I grow this one outdoor in the heat, so I got some sunburn. Yeah. Okay. okay. And this one here is grow in a greenhouse, shadier, but I do not get a side of can. Yeah, like it's different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's, so this is the difference between light quality, but. I can also kick this outside because I all this Formosa 
it, it's, it's it's hard harder 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 for them, and it in a in a greenhouse too shady for them. I, to my opinion, so I'm gonna go outside because that way you can get the maximum light and the cold temperature are going to induce yeah. more flowers. And, and actually, um, what is that one? The one with the frog cage, or the other with the mouse? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the premium. Yeah. So last year I grew it in the greenhouse, and the canes weren't as fat. That's yeah, thing. because the light quality yeah. in the wild, the premium, they mount themselves on the tree. So they export to when the tree drop has doesn't have as much leaf in the in the winter time, they might drop out the leaf, the light comes through. It. So they the can get fat and they got and they don't have monsoon they don't have monsoon, they can rain in the winter time. Guess what? The leaf drop. When the leaf drop. They got more light going through, and so all the flower bud can be exposed. You're gonna get maximum uh, flower. So if we do magnesium tomorrow, how long do we have to wait before we mega mega thrive and fertilize it? As long as it's not the same week, it's fine. So yeah. wait a week. Yeah, yeah, and it's just putting pretty much the the uh, you know mark it on your calendar. It's just just the same, maybe the week of your watering, and magnesium sulfate is if you just a tablespoon. It's not a very strong drink, so it's not going to burn your orchid, especially this time of year. Okay. Any further question? So I, I like this this uh this type. This is the Ratam Jaho Delight. Look up on iPhone. Tororic. Yeah. Oh. I love Jaho Delight type, the Formosa type, the new hybrid. The flower can last about minimum three months. Yeah. Minimum, and I have from and then. The, the suitable, the new hybrid versus the older, they just keep booming. Okay. Yeah. And remember the one that everybody like the picture had the beautiful red flower. Oh yes, I like that one. Okay, it's right here. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> well, it's huge now. <laughs> yeah, this is my. Uh, gosh, this is about. This is a species actually native to Taiwan, and this is one of the choice one. I'm, I'm eventually, I will try to clone this, uh, clone this one. I've been trying to clone this one because waiting for the new shoot. I got a new oh. shoot here. I'm not gonna break it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought you were gonna break it up. Is this related to um, Dendrobium msensitivus? Not pretty here. No, but is it the same family? Um, no. This is actually, uh, uh, this one here is actually very similar to Dendrobium formosa oh, area, is. but it's not the formosa type because they don't have hair. Okay, uh, don't worry, I have a number for this for this one here. And this is the time, is, uh, it's been going outdoor. Yes, it's outdoor in my patio over there, exposed to the heat. Yeah. And they actually, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, maybe profit. Well, my, we have a contractor going to come spray the greenhouse. So I'm not even going to uh, spike it until he's finished spraying. So see all this. This is why the, the, the picture, all this all flower, this can, yeah, this yeah. could be all flower. Oh. See, they flower on the all can. So it's okay to let them kind of do. I don't want to spike it and do like this. It, no, you want to let it lose. This is the one in the middle. It's gonna give you a flower. Oh, okay. Because we we do as a pot plant. Yeah. In the wild, they mount it on the tree, cascading. So they got a lot of air and light. So right now, I'm just gonna make sure. This is why we let we let the new grow. Kind of they lose. And also a cool dry rest. They can they can be outside. I'm, not, I'm gonna put this outside just like the novio type and give them a call and let them drop the leaf. I'm not gonna let them drop the leaf. And the, the colder the can and then it also drains with magnesium sulfate from the pot. And no water. And the Kevin Andrea, yeah. So this one I will, uh, to get the maximum flower in that the picture I show you, it was amazing. You know, yeah. this. And hopefully one day, <laughs> It's maybe get a, a cultural award. Look at this can. Yeah. And guess what the pollinators? This is the one I, I got in my 
I use it the ch my bamboo charcoal. Oh. All he had is bamboo charcoal. Was pure charcoal? Pure bamboo charcoal. Of the entire entire mix. Wow. There's no bark. That's why I love my bamboo charcoal. The bamboo charcoal is recycled. And one of the back of a bamboo charcoal versus some of the horticulture charcoal because we don't know what kind of wood they come from. Okay. And bamboo charcoal is slightly organized about seven, about 5.8, a slight, a slight about 5.7. Uh, and then with the fertilizer, the normal sort of fertilizer with acid. So by the time we go down there and we connect the solution for the bottom, it come up about 5.8, which is the perfect ultimate uh, pH for, for, for orchid, oh, for okay. intake of the uh, pH on it. So here we go. It's nice and dark, so then I will tell my my uh, the people who the pesticide applicator go ahead and hit them, make sure that he spray it in the middle. Sorry, <laughs> what pesticide do you recommend? I have scale problems. Uh, okay, my lawyer will tell me not to recommend any brand oh. because I will get sued. <laughs> but uh, let me hit you. Huh? What kind? No, 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 but it is the pesticide, uh, the common, let me put it this way. If you anything that sell at the big box store, but the main thing is, I don't care what you read on the internet. Everybody is an internet orchid expert. If a label did not sell, did not say, okay, I'm orchid, just be careful. When the label is just like when we, when we do five cent, remember five cent? Yeah. I helped five cent and I tested to an orchid. That's why five cent is registered to use an orchid specific. Uh, sometimes they might say house plant. Okay, well, guess what? House plant for philodendron. The substance on the leaf is a lot stronger than some of the orchid. So you cannot go by house plant. Okay, so the, to be on the safe side, you have to say, Orchid. So whatever the, the, the one you use, if it says orchid, then you can you can use it. Then the second thing is whatever the recommended ratio they give you, they always gonna you want you to use more so they can sell more. This is why the five cent, the label on orchid said a tablespoon per gallon, I use a teaspoon lower. So it's always easy to go lower, test it. I mean, if it's enough, because you don't want to go really high and then pesticide have pests, pests might develop a resistance and then you cannot even, then you have a problem with issue with it. So go by uh, any of the, uh, because every state has different regulation. We're in California with the worst state, okay? Uh, if it sells, if it sells at the garden center, it's okay. Go, and then, uh, because some of the, the Folarian, the Florida is part of the East, the most lucky one. They can, they have a lot of stuff that we cannot buy in California. Uh, but to make sure, use the caution because you have a hotter temperature. Uh, always uh, water all your plant the day before, so you don't get a uh, uh, pesticide toxicity to it. Okay. And then secondly, if they get they say orchid, then use either that is the safe side. And if you, anything that somebody recommend you on the internet, if you maybe good for his area because you don't know how he's growing condition, okay. But if you had to use it, don't spread it on entire collection. Use on a couple print. And a lot of time, even for myself, before I use any other pesticide, uh, I will use, for example, for a lot some of the more tender one, I use maiden hair fern. As an indicator, oh, spray on made in hair fur. If there any other pesticide that burn the, the made in hair fur, not for the smog, because in California we have smog. Okay, made in hair is very subject to the smog damage. But if you spray them, uh, it got made in hair curl up or burn them at that ratio that you that recommended. So you got you got to be careful with that. So always try and air. But a lot of time with the pesticide, I will, I will, don't worry, I will do another seminar on pest and disease, okay? A lot of time is house cleaning, you know? 
this is that's what that's what I was doing earlier. We, I clean up the leaf, make sure that make sure we take up all this all debris. <laughs> okay, uh, house cleaning. This is why we usually have a spring and open spring and fall open house because that forces us to clean the land, nursery under a bench. Yeah. So, one question. Yes. It says, uh, fungicide is best for dendrobiums. I heard that Bison 27 is not for dendrobium. Yes and no. The question is Phytop 27, right here. Oh, sorry, Phytop, yes. Okay. The all copper fungicide, that one, when you, the four farmers use, when you spray them, everything to brew, uh, that is not for dendrobium phalaenopsis, the evergreen type. Now, since dendrobium, when they come up with this statement or the topic, there is no dendrobium for most of them. 30, 40 years ago. In fact, this is why I only, I only recommend Phyta 27. Okay, there's always this thing Phytam 27 is a more expensive and more advanced formulation of copper fungicide. The what's amazing about this one is when you and you add the, I want to use a tablespoon per gallon and you want to spray the foliage only if I make a try. You spray the foliage and it doesn't really give you any of those blue all copper fungicide. It's a much more gentle formulation. So this you can use the unformosum type, but not necessary. As long as you don't spray the evergreen type, the Denfield, Jack and Thomas type. But the formosum type, with the one with the hair, the tough. They are they are more successful to uh, copper base. But especially, but if you want to use any copper base, use five times twenty seven. And I, I I I think a couple of weeks ago I used five times five times twenty seven. I usually do it twice a year in the fall, in the spring. So right now it's a good time to spray five, five times twenty-seven. Especially if you live in Florida, you have a lot of moisture. Or Louisiana, you have a uh, you have a, a storm coming just going through. Uh, it's good. This is the one that I usually recommend people to use because five cent twenty five cent is a preventative program. Okay, but when you really have problem, this is when you bring out a big gun. And use this okay can the if you are growing the dens outside can they grow outside in western light yes even after noon light yes because remember right now in the winter time the sun is not strong at all now it's very gentle like today you go outside yeah there's not much sun even if the sun is not as strong as intensity as what we have in the middle of july and august right yeah so this is why it's a perfect time to move all your dendrobium type to for a full morning sun and you will not burn it. They will really benefit and you're gonna get more flower this How coming. Full afternoon sun. Full afternoon sun, not gradually. 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 You know, you don't wanna put it outside from your house. It used to be a very dark area and outdoor. And make sure that one is also hardy enough for you to be outside. Okay. The last time with for the outdoor okay, we usually put it outdoor. Like this one here, remember the miniature one, <laughs> the wearable orchid. I was showing one of the judges earlier. This have have Cassinia in the background, so Fernandez Cassinia. But this is from out outside. It, with, with all the hot weather we have, hundred degree. Okay. But we put this out in March, so they gradually they used to the outside temperature, but not as ideally as in in uh, in the greenhouse. Okay. So this is the very example of the Jaho Delight. Look at this, for most of the time. All this can, they can have flower. And this is not bad. My uh, my Frosty Dawn has uh -huh. never flowered from the lower part of the stem. It's always been on top. Yeah, because, because you were giving uh, too much, too shady. Oh. Yeah, and Andrew is too, that's what the golden orchid. Uh, with dendrobium and calnia, you know, I think a lot of people just afraid to, afraid to 
burn them. No, they can take the abuse. I call it abuse. <laughs> it's, it's, I call it tough love. <laughs> no, seriously, it's tough love. So I, I, I just that kid, you know, if you give, you know, give it too much TRC, you don't want to spoil your kid. Let them play in the dirt. Let them play in the dirt, yep. I play in the dirt. They, they don't develop their own immune system. Okay. Now, any more question about? Oh yeah, I forgot. The the, the next top, next one is the no milk kind. Yes. Okay. Now this is the tricky. Uh, the most. This is oh, no milk kind. Outdoor grown. Got some kickies up there. And this is yeah. no milk type. Different variety. Okay. This is the one right now. It's outdoor grown. Okay. Leave it alone. Are these hybrids or the species? The hybrid. This is a hybrid. Okay. So this is this is the to my kid. One of my oh well, no, this is the uh, the Japanese white white flower. This is the what we call the tall variety. Okay. I treated that some uh at the end of the fall now. The, we gotta remove oh, this. Ouch. It's okay. They're tough. <laughs> so this is the one in the fall. You start removing all your cakey and then start a new one, get a label. Okay. And they have a nice suitable. Strut. I have a question about the kikis for the no build type. Yes. So once you remove the kiki, do you grow the kiki warm after? Or do you Well then right now for this one for example I have a nice root here. I'll put it in a in a small pot, maybe two and a half, three inch pot. Yeah. Okay. And then uh this is our for us in, uh, in California, I st we still have one month of warm weather. So I would, it's okay to put it outdoor. But if I do it, if I'm doing this and you live in Oregon or New Hampshire, you cannot, it, it's more beneficial for them to be inside, treating that or put it with antifrine analysis on the warm side. Okay. Tell them to develop a root system. But this one here, because in California, we, at night, it's still 60 degrees and 65. Okay, so I can leave, I can pot them up. If you have, if you have, don't have space, leave it outside along with it, but separate them. Because this one need water. The nobio type, the mature one, like this one, for example, this is an older one, right? I would just cut off, pinch off. I want, because this one will flower along with the next one. Uh -huh. So, and also, so I should go take the leaves off my no type now? Yeah, because especially the one that is been, has some kind of, uh, it's not very ornamental, right? My Parisia, I take leaves off? Yes, if, okay. it, if, a, if an old one? Yeah. Yeah, because that way it kind of exposes the can, okay. the light. But not if you're, per, if, but not if the terminal leaves have, hasn't come up. I mean, my Parisia still has, it's still growing. So. Yeah, but but the old my can, old, the old, 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 can. old one, the old okay, one, okay, yeah, okay. the old one. So the nobio type, okay, nobio, nobio type, uh, nobio the, the type of species from the foothill of Himalaya. So they really, they can take the cold and the heat, but this is the time you want to put all your nobio type in it in one corner, away from your evergreen type, away from your Symbidium, away from your Formosa type. And in California, uh, by about November, it's not warm at night. Uh, Started about after Thanksgiving, uh, or before Thanksgiving, is uh, when you stop. No water and no feeding, nothing. You can spray Mecca Dry, because Mecca Dry is really not a fertilizer, but stop feeding any of the, the, the fertilizer. Just let them stress, because we're trying to create that their native uh, atmosphere that from the foot here or Himalaya will call, all right? So what happens if you feed them? This is why I say I don't like uh, some of the slow release fertilizer. If you put in slow release fertilizer in the middle of summer and they're still there, so have a lot of nitrogen, okay? Instead of getting you a flower in the springtime, this is why you're getting a lot of kiki. Instead of getting flower spike in the wintertime, you get kiki. That is from the over nitrogen uh, in the slow release. So this is why I don't like the slow release fertilizer because slow release fertilizer you cannot control. It's there, and Ouch. and Ouch. you don't know you don't know if they're Ouch. still there or not. And that's why I like Ouch. the come here closer. Let me touch you. Ouch. <laughs> and that's why you don't 
snow. Oh, Dermot, what's wrong? This is why uh, with the liquid fertilizer, you can have more lichen problem. <laughs> okay, so novel type, if you go under light, uh, novel type is not as ideal to go under light because it requires really cold night temperature. Unless you have a separate room, you know, I do know some people who have a go light in the basement and they get cold like in Kentucky at night. So that's that's okay. You don't have you, you can have another room that you don't heat them. And that's okay that you can go your, your some of the temperature uh, sensitive one like black casty, yeah. for example. I did that when I was in New York in an apartment. One room with the window cracked open. Yes, that's a good chance. I'm I think medium goes in there and my go. Yes, well and that's good. That's good tips for, from Andrew. Are we ready for show and tell? Can you go ahead and give the mag magnesium Epsom salts to the Nobel tech now? Oh. Yes. So. Uh, when I say everything, I mean everything. So do that and then rest it. Oh, wait, 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 you guys are punching into my jumpers. Okay, Andrew, yeah, you're on my jumpers. Everybody touch my jumpers. Be careful with my jumpers. <laughs> Thank you, Norman. You're welcome. Did Norman take off? Okay, I'm going to do it here. So I have two cinema subjects that draw me in. Uh, this is from, I think, Philippines and Burma. Okay, for the number. Uh, this is Scream Wormer. This is Evergreen type. Uh, for this is one. This is one of the many beautiful dendrobium species, but but they can go outside California. Uh, dendrobium, simple grass is yellow oh. and with fragrant, and you can go in the basket or mountain. And the flower usually kind of hand in the Amadeira oh. grassa, but I love them because they're, this is quite rare. Right? But this is nice. Nice species. Look at how the, the size. Yeah, it looks almost like an MS, uh, MS, MS. Yeah, but no, amethyst grass has the can is fatter, and amethyst grasses tend to have. They usually flower in summertime, but they tend to have a lot of yeah. mildew. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And yeah, mine they, actually they, they different from a... because that this this is more intermediate grower. Oh. This is from the mountain of Burma, uh, North Thailand. Amethyst grass is a tropical one from Philippines, so you know, very warm. Okay. And another one is kind of cool, very, very similar to the one I have here. It's another intermediate grower. Okay, Brian. So tall. This is one of the one that is what I consider as an intermediate grower. And it's not very tall, so it's, it's good for under light. And the foliage is, is nice about all this Asia uh, dendrobium. But the suitable, the can is very pretty. Almost just a like miniature bamboo. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so the, the can is very ornamental. So all this, this is a good time to get it now because the, for our experience grower, people get it now. It, it's cheaper to get it now before they, they start spiking. And then you can condition into your own condition. This is what we like we in, in Miami too, or in Florida. Uh, I seen people go in the in the basket, the tea basket, the scent for venda, and put a moss, and they just uh, and, they just take off. And as a California grower, when you say intermediate, how intermediate? That make it go down to about four, uh, 50 to hundred. They can so I'm hot. okay outdoor. Yeah, they, they can hot and cold. They can be outside. And then, uh, I might have to <laughs> And if I'm the drawing, this is, so this is the number. Okay, can I have a number on this? Uh, this is the Nobel type, uh, but very good leaf. Yeah. And they do have flower in the uh, lower side. In the, is, is. So this one here, sometimes uh, for lots of you, can even what I like about this one, this is the yellow one, yellow hybrid. The yellow on the novel type, this particular crown does not need as much coal as some other hybrid to flower. I know 
we sell, we have a lot of customers who bought this variety for me in Miami, in Homestead, and it doesn't require cold temperature. But dry. Yeah, to dry and the flower yellow. But I would, this is perfect for, and they don't, they don't get very big, uh, perfect for both under light, even just for the foliage. For but it, they didn't need, need a dry, dry field or something? No. 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 Oh. That's not, yeah. Not because of the, 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 the species they use in this one here. It's a little bit warmer. And we just, I just released this one today because uh, I saw it in flower. So this is the Dendroian Formosa. Uh, this is actually been awarded uh, a crown. It's got the silver medal in Taiwan. This is uh, this is the, the species where it comes from. But I love this one here is the Caloric. Pitiful. Okay. It's favorite too, right? Yes, slightly, slightly fragrant. Today is kind of uh, crowded today. And then another Dendrovian. Everybody know the farmer, right? This is the Pororic, yeah. this is the gold medal from Japan. This is the, the, the chase in, but the entire pure white. You can look at the picture. And the plant don't get very big. Look at, look at, look at how robust. For, for me, farmer is very easy. Yeah, and go outside. Yeah, it, I go outside. But even they, they go easy in Florida too. Yeah. Yeah. And this is one of the, for farm is one of the air, uh, stuff that in, in, even in uh, northeast, northwest is, is nice. But they, they don't, but they don't like wet. If, if no, it gets too in wet, the, in the time, flower. Yeah, they, so the, the dryness is at what we call stress. Yeah. It's actually encouraged more flower. They have to dry. Yeah, so this right here, it's been good. I've been good, getting a lot of light and water. Yeah. So I'm going to another three weeks. I'm actually going to kick, kick him out of the greenhouse. And now, leave it outdoor. So would I do a full morning sun for this yes. as well? Yes. Okay. So for this one here, for example, I'm going to kick him outside. Uh, take advantage of the cold weather we have. The, and then in California right now, a day and night could be 25 degrees degree deep. So I can put it outside and leave it as long as I want. And I can control the temperature but how early I put in there. For example, this one flower usually flower in naturally in March, okay? And I can leave it outside in January to hold it back because outside in January in California is cold. But I, I, so I put it out, the longer I put it outdoor in the cold temperature, I can delay the flower. So by, I can put the flower in the greenhouse, the heated greenhouse, for example, uh, the end of January, so I can have them grow for Mother's Day uh, rather than March. So Norman, yeah. So this is how you can conduct uh, by by putting orchid outdoor. You can you can actually uh, changing uh, or try to uh, manipulate the growing uh, flowering season. Okay. So Norman, mine, mine only flowers in August, and I don't know why. The regular farmer. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the light. I think you, the happen is Andrew. You probably getting too much too shady. Oh, okay. that's why they you, you will delay in them. Oh, okay. unconsciously you will delay because they did not they don't get in the light to mature the can. Okay, this so one. this is this is another one of MC one night. But this is the frosty dawn. You frosty dawn remember? But this is the dwarf one. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, don't worry, we're gonna have to release it as soon as finish. Uh, this is a miracle. The frosted down is half, is half the species, for instance, and then uh, compared to uh, Andrew's plant, this is about half of the size and, and more compact. Right. And then, Okay, so this is a nice, if you don't have a lot of space, and this, this is perfect for under light, because it, it stays small. Okay, so this is the one I would recommend if you don't have a lot of space for windowsill, okay? Uh, the compact is a, is a chrome that we, we have. Oh, Catalina. Oh, this is Audi Bakudi. MC1668, okay, it's an epic cap. And it's beautiful. It flowers twice a year. The spiking is coming up, and I love the can. You're gonna see the silver. 
Yeah. It looks like back to some almost looks like a miniature uh, sugar can. Yeah. And, no. and this is a Renette Margaret hybrid. Uh, the other one is, is a uh, mini 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 uh, yellow cap. So this is a, you can see a lot of evidential imprints on it, but I, this is very ornamental. Perfect for under light on windowsill. Don't grow very tall. And the flower lasts a long time, three to four flowers. How cold do you let your pet hybrids go? Pet? Cat. Cat. Well, this one here is in, in our intermediate house. They go down to about 45. Okay. Yeah. And dry. And dry. And dry. dry. Yeah. And this is why they, I call them really bright and the light is from the bright. So don't worry if you got the, the, the plant and baby, oh my God, it's, it's red, it, but plant is not. No, this is the way that the plant looks like. When a new grow in the bright light, they give you this reddish color. As a plant mature, they can do green. So this, not everything had to be green. Okay, all right. Oh, good. Now, this is the one, the same species as the big one I have here. The one that, the orange red. This is the species from Taiwan, and look at this nice suitable here already. It's ready to brush the frost. The, 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 the species is ranging from fuchsia color purple. They can have, they can flower orange, or they can flower red. The red is more desirable, but very rare. So this is why sometimes we had to clone them. But this is the species to have wonderful, uh, not rarely available, but if you find them, good. Guess how old this one is? This is four years old. Oh. And this is, this one here is about 20, 15 to 20 years old. And yeah, this is like a living antique. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is fun. And Brian gave us a, oh, I think we might have this before. Nodosa. Q1. Uh, this is a new uh, Nodosa hybrid uh, called Pink Diamond. It's a primary hybrid. The other parent is Walker Tenriana. Oh. Yes. So Walker, this is still a small plant, but nice fragrance, but the substance from Calaria Walker Tenriana. Wonderful. If you go to David Center before, this is easy to grow. And Andrew, I have a David Center too, right? Oh, I found this already. Oh, you did? Okay, do you have a stable center in there? Yes. Okay, good. Let me put it side by side. That's a cool one. Yeah, that's, that's Yeah, this nice. is baby sender. This is all this is all perennial plant. David sender is a, a bigger plant, taller. Uh, good for basket mounted. But this is the cross David Sender is the piana cross with Nodosa. So this one is Nodosa cross with Walker Daniel, so you can see the Walker Daniel lip coming through. But the pink diamond is about half of the size of David Sender. So the fuzzy lip. Yeah. Go yes. side by side and they are nine fragrant and perfect for under light. Anything with no dosa is, is easy. And this one here is Dendrovium. It's not farmerine. Uh Parsi flower pea. Poly peripari, check the foliage. Uh, it's such a bigger flower and cascading. They, they this is actually really cute. Not as rarely seen because beautiful leaf and perfect for under light. This one do not need to have cold period. So if you go under light, this one is okay. Can it? Hmm? Can it? Can it? Yeah, you can hand it. Yeah. I mean, but, can it have cold cold and, period? Yes. But it does not require cold period because I, I have customer flower this at wonderful at Tampa, from Tampa to Homestead. And what, what color are the flowers? Uh, white. White with yellow center? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. And for those who live in Florida or the tropical area, this is the one that Jack and Thomas type. I told you it can be get really tall. The evergreen type, but it's wonderful. The flower lasting for cut flower and they all have a big flush of flower in the middle of summer so this is the one to have if you like tall they drove in evergreen type and it's a one of the uh, most profuse uh, variety they use for cut flower okay nf2558 
and then I have a calorie I is from two sport kit MC1688 uh, I think I post on the picture it's a one of the new big white standard white flower with yellow straw and it's from two sport kit what I like about his plant is it got standard size flower but it's compact plant for big flower so this is the one, this is the size to get. I think we have less than 35. So get if you, uh, don't wait if you like standard and fragrance. <clears throat> this will flower come in spring. And another good fragrant one is miniature. This was actually intergenetic with Ringo Starter Jack and Tia. So white with pink lip and they are cute, cute. Look at it, they're spiking already. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is Ringo Starr and Jack Antin in the background with with oh. Hunter Oh. Okay, so this is miniature, All right? And they flower at this twice a year, and very fragrant. So this one, Spike can get him now. You can flower for uh, Christmas for you. And one of my favorites, the Dragonium, Jaho Delight, the new heat tolerance. Now. This is the one I say I will we actually test it, go outside with Mega Drive for test. And this actually flower outside with the heat. Uh, incredible substance is much more free flowering than some of the older the Don Marie type. And very nice and very disciplined candy. Look at this. <laughs> okay. It's called Jaho Delight. And they're not too tall, not too short, just not perfect hiding, perfect height. Not a lot today. Oh, <laughs> the four season. Uh, Charles here. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Even the leaf looks like solid, but this is not the. This does not require cold temperature like some of the compact. This one's on the website. Huh? It's not on the website. Okay. So we will release this one. Okay. But we need to release this one. Mini cap. Oh, this is my favorite. It's called Creation. Creation flowers at least twice a year, spring and fall. Uh, very easy to grow. Uh, cold tolerance too. So this is a good, wonderful uh, for outdoor uh, area. And in the fall, they in the springtime they can carry up to four, four to six flowers. This is just the first one of crop. Okay, wonderful, beautiful, really nice plant. Oh, last two. They give us all the fragrance. Wow, this is the Green Genie. Okay, and Andrew, can you have give me that Green Genie carrier? Yeah. Green Genie is a wonderful car AM. They flow on a small plant like this, and they say small plant. And the they, the biggest they can get is this. This is Green Genie. You see here? So this is something that you can look forward. This is the vision of the, the model print. I think Jamie's gonna be on the jumper tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it just to show you Green Genie. This is the big, the print gets stay small. This is the this is the most you can get, but it's a wonderful one to us. So if you don't have, if you don't have a good mini cap with fragrance and green, this is the must. It's called green. Uh, Green Genie, got a water or a mirror. Okay, and we only put one fan analysis today. And uh, this is the one I would just go for the full, uh, the fragrance alone. It's really big. It's uh, LD Bonina Eagle, if I'm Prince Orchid. What I like about this one here is it's a lot of vanilla and violet. It's a background huge flower, small print, and a lot of flowers. This is the first book. <laughs> so if you like fragrance, under light, uh, we saw a lot three years ago, and then we found a few more. So this is the one to get, and that's what we got for today. So thank you for saying.
the session today. Woo! And next week, we're going to talk, talk about focus on calorie. But I'm going to break it down to the mini cap. So, because calorie is a very big group. So, we're going to talk about the mini cap first and then we'll do the standard. Okay? So, stay tuned for next week's podcast for culture on the mini cap for winter and fall. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.